Okay, in this video, we're looking at why and how we can use money as a model for understanding fractions. So how do we use money to understand what fractions are? And I like this model because although we certainly don't need to think of coins every time we deal with fractions, it turns out that looking at some simple coins, we can understand some s simple relationships between adding and subtracting fractions. So uh, coins are have their have their value right based on a dollar. So first of all, we have a half dollar. That's a coin, right? You might not see this very often, of course, but a half dollar is fifty cents. So that's fifty cents, and I think we can recognize that that is also one half of a dollar, right? Fifty cents is one half of a dollar because if we have two of them, we have a whole dollar. So that's one half. So now every time we see a half, using this model, we can think of 50 cents or a half dollar. That's, that's the model. So first of all, every time you see a half, think of 50 cents. That's a nice connection right there. Notice we take one half and we automatically convert it to a whole number, 50. So by making that connection, we see how this fraction could represent a whole number. And we convert between fractions and whole numbers very quickly. Then we have a quarter. A quarter is of course 25 cents. Okay, 25 cents. Well, What will that be as a fraction? Well, it's one-fourth of a dollar. And that makes sense, I think, because four quarters make a dollar. So now the idea is, and then, you know, hang in there with me, one-fourth, when you see that fraction, think of 25 cents or a quarter, the actual dime itself. And again, you might notice that this gives us one-fourth associates with the whole number 25, which, and we also have now a mental image in each of these cases. A quarter, that's a physical piece to think about to relate to one-fourth. A half dollar, another coin, a physical object that we can relate to one-half, and we keep going. What about a dime? Well, a dime, of course, is, is 10 cents. What's that going to be as a fraction? Well, since it takes 10 dimes to make a dollar, we could say one dime is one-tenth of a dollar. So now we could say every time you see one-tenth, try and think of 10 cents or a dime. And again, we're making that connection. All of a sudden, one-tenth has a physical representation in a small coin, which also equals 10 cents. And again, the goal here is to give us something to hold on to for each of these fractions, some kind of intuition, either a whole number in terms of how many cents or pennies, or a physical coin. And we also have a nickel. And that is going to be five cents. And here, um, I think often we might rush and say, well, that's one-fifth of a dollar because it's five cents, so it's one-fifth. But think about how many times five cents goes into one dollar. In other words, how many nickels would we need to make a dollar? And that's 20. So that means one nickel is one twentieth of a dollar. And now what we can say is, when you see that fraction, one twentieth, think of that as five cents, or a nickel, right? And we also could say, well, I'll, I'll just go through it really quick. A penny, of course, is one cent, and that goes into a, a dollar a hundred times. So we can use that as one one hundredth of a dollar. And then we could say when you see this fraction, oops, think of as one penny or one cent. And the goal here, of course, is just to give us a physical connection between these fractions, these whole numbers, and these physical coins. And this is actually quite useful. We can begin to explore the connections here, right? If I have two, two quarters, how many cents do I have? Well, I have 50 cents. Well, that means that a two one-fourths has to equal a half. And we, we can begin to make all these kinds of different connections. We can connect that, well, if I have two dimes, isn't that 20 cents? Okay, well, if I have five dimes, isn't that 50 cents? Oh, well, that means five one-tenths is also a half. And we can keep going. Two nickels, that's five cents. Okay, 
each is five cents, so altogether it's ten cents. So that must mean that two one twentieths is the same thing as one tenth, because every one twentieth is a nickel. So two of them is twenty is ten cents, and that's got to be one tenth of a dollar, or a dime. So in other words, this model allows us to explore also explore between the connections between each of these fractions by thinking about the money, thinking about the physical objects. And we can begin to also solve um, sums that seem complicated very quickly. If, we, if I gave you this, 1 fourth plus 1 twentieth, you might be tempted to use the algorithm, but don't, don't rush. Don't try to convert 1 fourth into twentieths, right, into 5 into five twentieths and get an answer that way. You can do that, nothing wrong with that, but try this model. Think about 1 fourth as a quarter. So this is 25 cents. And this, 1 20th, oh, it's a nickel. So that's 5 cents. Altogether, how much is that? Well, it's 30 cents. And that's out of a dollar, or out of 100 pennies. So this sum has to equal 30 out of 100. Uh, and we can reduce that, right? But the point is that we can make sense of this sum. It does make sense if we think of this connection that this equals 30 out of 100. I, I just worry that if we just use the algorithm and turn 1 fourth into 5 twentieths, and then we add it to 1 twentieth and we get 6 twentieths, that we lose a sense of what this really means. And then we're given more difficult problems. We have nothing to go back to and we have no anchor to think about. This model might work for you and might give you that, that anchor. Anyway, so in the next couple of videos, we're going to look at what we call um, fraction strings and look at different sums and differences of fractions uh, through the lens of this money model. And I think you'll, you'll like that. And if you're feeling weak in fractions, this might really help. So hang in there. Thanks.